common situation you have, you're dialing something in, and like this one here, this Volvo case, um, it's double wonky. <laughs> Besides being one direction, the front axle takes off in the other direction, so our angle plate doesn't bring it up right. Uh, it's a straight 90 degree angle plate, so we end up having to start shimming it at the front. We're on the trial and error stage now, but if you want to get into where you have an initial amount, take your thousandths difference from the top to the bottom, or from any distance, and then you relate it to where your base length is. So you have that length up there, <coughs> which in this case is six inches, and right here is 18. So you have a three to one ratio. So whatever your difference is between those two numbers, jack it up three times as far. Keep your ratios equal. So you set this up as an equal ratio. Sometimes your six and 18 for your distances aren't quite as clear and easy. They could be different numbers and then you cross multiply. If you forget, it's just this one times this one divided by this one and that gives you your answer of 450 in this, stop, this situation. So that's how far we would raise it up over an 18 inch distance to make up for a mistake on a six inch measurement. Yeah, with our equal ratio, I was talking about, I think I was talking about shims underneath here, but whether I was talking about shims or whether I was talking about the angle this way for how much deviation it was. Yeah, I, I well, whichever one it was. We did our calculation on the board and I mentioned earlier how you keep an equal ratio. The other thing, which is really handy and in all this stuff, you can't have too many dial indicators. But let's say we're moving, well, if we're shimming up, it's just a matter of how much shims we wanna start with under one side, because the other side is setting solid. So that's how much to shim it. But if we're doing an angle across this way, where we have a whole plate that we're moving, sometimes we don't have a definite pivot point that it's gonna pivot at. So what you do is you put two indicators on here and to set your angle, set them both on zero, but what you're looking for is how much they change. So if what you need is 75 thousandths from one end to the other, you start bumping this one and it happens to move the other one a little bit, it, it's not gonna be a problem to you. If that one happens to come up three thousandths as you're moving things around, then move this one up to 78 if you're looking for 75 difference. If that one ends up, it moves back a little bit as you're moving things and it's 10 thousandths behind, bring this one to 65. So by setting two indicators, it causes you a lot less trouble with things that tend to walk around on a table. And as Austin reminded me, he was just by here, when we got done with dialing all of this in, we put all indicators everywhere. We have six of them around this base on different places, all of them set to zero. So if something moves while you're doing more, once it's dialed in, you can tap it back. You know where to go to to return to your same place. And that can save you a whole bunch of aggravation and time.